Now, Jesus and his disciples were Jewish, so they celebrated the Feast of the Passover every year. Luke records, when the day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread arrived, the day for sacrifice in the Passover lamb, he sent out Peter and John, instructing them, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Go and make preparations. Well, let's see. They had to procure a lamb. They had to kill a lamb without breaking his bones. They had to make unleavened bread. They had to gather together the bitter herbs and the salt water and the green herbs. There were a lot of symbolic foods that they had to put together, and there's more. So he tells them to make the preparations, and he answered them. <clears throat> they asked him, where do you want us to make the preparations? And he answered them, when you go into the city, a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. And say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room that is furnished. Make the preparations there. Then they went off and found everything exactly as he told them, and there they prepared the Passover. Go into the city, a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. I've been told that carrying water was a woman's job. And to find a man carrying water would be a little bit odd. And they did. They found everything as Jesus had told them. And they prepared the symbolic foods of the Passover, ready to celebrate this Passover meal, as they all have every year of their life. This begins as a normal Passover meal. Now, the, the disciples of Jesus were Jewish. And when, they, when the Gospels were written, they were written for people who knew about a Passover meal. But we're Gentiles that live 2,000 years later and we don't really understand anything about a Passover meal. So when we read this section, a lot of it just goes right over my head. We're going to look at this. Now that we've had our background on Passover, we're going to look at this with new eyes. Look at Matthew's recording. While they were eating. No, stop. Time out right there. While they were eating. Now we know from our order of the Passover, which we studied, that they already had the first cup, which was a festival blessing. They've already had the, the Passover narrative, which is where they explain how the Israelites were freed from bondage. They haven't drank from the third cup yet because you do that after you eat. So they're right in the Passover in the middle of it, the part where they're eating. They're eating the symbolic foods. And Jesus says to them, Jesus took the bread, he said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Now there's something wrong here. This is not a normal process for a Passover meal. They're supposed to eat the symbolic foods and drink the third cup and close the Passover meal by drinking the fourth cup. But Jesus changes things. He takes the bread and he holds it the same way, he handles it the same way he did when he fed 5,000 people. And when he fed 4,000 people, he took the bread, said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to him and said, this is my body I was telling you about. This is my body. Take it and eat it. Then he took a cup. Now what cup was it? Oh, wait the third cup. Jesus takes a cup, the third cup, the cup of blessing. He takes the third cup and says, drink this. This is the blood. This is my blood of the covenant. It's a new covenant. Had an old covenant. He institutes a new covenant. And they do. And this covenant will be, um, will be shed. The blood is shed on behalf of, of many for the forgiveness of sins. The blood in the Old Covenant was put on the altar for atonement for sins. Now, Jesus does something here that's totally off the wall. We miss this a lot. We miss this totally. He's supposed to close the Passover meal, but he doesn't. It's almost as if he intends to just leave it open. He looks and says, I tell you, from now on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until I drink it new in the kingdom of, of my Father. We're supposed to be reading Jesus drank from the fourth cup, but he didn't. He puts the fourth cup down, and they, they sing a hymn, which is the great Hallel, and they walk out of the Passover meal. Jesus walked out in the middle of his Passover meal. He did it for a reason. 
He purposely omits drinking from this fourth cup. He's going to drink the fourth cup in a little while. It's going to be hard. He's going to die drinking that fourth cup. Right now, the Passover meal is open. They sing a hymn, which is the great Hillel, and they go out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, they go to a garden because the redemption of mankind begins in a garden because the fall of mankind started in a garden. Adam and Eve were in a garden, and Jesus brings redemption beginning in the garden of Gethsemane. While he's in the garden, he prays. Matthew records, Then Jesus came to the place with him, the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and, and began to feel sorrow and distress. He said to them, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. What cup? What cup is Jesus praying? Let this cup, if it is your will. What cup? It's the fourth cup. He has another cup to drink. He knows it's going to be hard drinking this cup. He knows the future. But he prays, let it be your will, Father, not my will. Matthew also records, withdrawing a second time, he prayed, My Father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. This Passover meal is still open. Jesus has another cup to drink. He hasn't closed the Passover meal. He's going to close it in a little while, but first he's going to change the sacrificial lamb. They used to sacrifice a lamb during Passover. Jesus will be sacrificed. We have a new lamb, the lamb of God. The Passover meal is open. This Passover meal is continued at this point. It's not over with yet. It will close later on. I'll show you when it closes. So Jesus is in the garden and Jesus is arrested. Look at, the, at your hand out at the top of it. says, Jesus is arrested. I think it ought to say, Jesus allows himself to be arrested. All through the Gospels, they tried to arrest Jesus, and he would just walk right through the people, right through their midst. They couldn't catch him. He's God. He could get away anytime he wanted to. But John records a special way Jesus was arrested. It goes like this. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priest and the Pharisees, and they went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. And Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave. He cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup the Father gave me? Look at the cup again. Shall I not drink the cup? He's saying, Peter, you can't win this fight. Not tonight. I could get away if I wanted to. I'm letting myself be arrested. But notice who's in charge. I've seen a lot of police movies on TV, and sometimes people get arrested on these shows, and they, they chase them in a car, in a car wreck, and they run, and they hold them down, and they, they uh, handcuff them. And there's a lot of screaming and yelling and kicking. But Jesus lets himself be arrested. In fact, He's completely in charge. He walks out and says, who are you looking for? They tell him, and he says, I am. They fall to the ground. He doesn't run. He stays right there. He's completely in charge. Peter pulls his sword out and says, he cut, cut his ear off, and, and Jesus says, not tonight. Don't fight. I have a cup to drink. He knows what's coming. 